If you told me that the Nuggets would go on the road in the second game of the season and beat the Warriors, I probably would have said, let's put 20 on it. And I would have lost that 20 because the Nuggets ended up winning that game. Obviously not what I expected. Very unhappy with the results, but it's still just way too early to come to conclusions or get overly upset, right? Having said that, they did lose the game for a reason. Defensively, it was just a disaster. Particularly in the first quarter, the Warriors gave up 40 points. But they gave up 16 of those 40 points in the final three and a half minutes of the game. So let's look at the film and see what exactly it is that went wrong for the Warriors so that we're keeping track of what's going on throughout the season. And if we start to see a trend with certain rotations and certain players, then you can come to certain conclusions and you can make adjustments as needed as the season goes. You can't just keep doing the same thing over and over if it's not working, right? We're talking about the Warriors here. We're not talking about a rebuilding team. We're not talking about a contending team. We are talking about the title favorites looking to be completely and utterly dominant this season. So let's get straight to the film and see what's going on. We're at the three and a half minute mark. Steph Curry is still in the game. The bench unit has entered. Jonathan Kuminga and James Wiseman, the kids, as I like to call them, are in the game. Let's see what happens here. Jokic gets the ball in the post against Wiseman. The passer, who is Jonathan Kuminga's man, cuts through the baseline. Now Jokic has all of the left side to work. See what happens here. This is an interesting situation because the Warriors want to know what James Wiseman is capable, at least from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint. And this is a great test because he's going up against one of the best, if not the best, offensive centers in the game today. And you could argue that he's one of the greatest offensive centers of all time, Jokic. So let's see how he does. The Warriors are in a comfortable spot. They have a one point lead. Jokic hasn't been going off. So you don't need to throw any double teams or anything like that, right? All right, so let's watch. Boom, I'm gonna pause it right here. The Warriors are packing the paint to make Jokic feel uncomfortable, I guess. But they are within arm's reach of the guys that they are defending, right? However, Jonathan Kuminga is coming over to double team Jokic. Now this goes against everything I just said. You don't want to double team Jokic at this juncture of the game. Number one, because you want to see what James Wiseman can do. Number two, you never want to throw a double team at a guy unless that guy is just completely going off and destroying your team. Because if you're throwing a committed double team at somebody, you're actually compromising your defense. Now everybody has to compensate. Everybody has to rotate like crazy. And just hope for the best but chances are one guy is going to end up being wide open and that's not a good strategy against a guy like Jokic who is an incredible passer at his position at six foot eleven he can see the floor he can see everything you don't want to double this guy unless you absolutely and utterly have to so I don't know why Jonathan Kuminga is coming over to double team it's not even a good double team he's just putting two hands up now Jokic does miss the shot here and here's where the cardinal sin happens where Kuminga loses complete sight of his own man who goes up to grab a free offensive rebound. The worst thing you can do as a defensive unit is to give up second chance opportunities. Now, offensive rebounds do happen in the course of a basketball game. It happens, right? But there are some that are acceptable because the ball just rolls that way. It just goes to the opposition. It is what it is. Long rebounds. It happens, right? It's another story when the opposition grabs an offensive rebound because one of your guys failed to do the basic of basics, which is to put a man on your body to make sure that they don't have an easy path to an offensive rebound because an offensive rebound equals a reset and another opportunity for the opposition. All that work you did for 20 seconds is wasted. It is highly irresponsible. It is one of the reasons why Jonathan Kuminga was not playable in the playoffs because he was not covering the basics and that's what happens here on this play okay so again the nuggets end up getting another possession out of it the ball swings around ends up on the other side of the floor bones highland is now isoing against steph curry i like my odds in that situation i think steph curry can easily make bones highland uncomfortable enough to have to give up the rock because he's not going to get a good shot there see what happened okay highland makes a couple of moves and is now attempting to post up against steph curry again i don't think this is a smart play 
but what is the defense doing here? Why is Jordan Poole sagging off so much off of his man to help Steph Curry against Bones Highland? Like usual common sense, trust in Steph Curry's defense. More importantly, what the hell is James Wiseman doing? He is completely out of position. He's not guarding Jokic at all. He's only looking at the ball and Bones Highland. This is what you call lack of experience. Listen, as a center, it is important to be in position to discourage baseline drives. However, you also have to read the situation. Once again, Steph Curry is doing just fine against Bones Highland. You gotta make sure that your attention is still on Jokic, your main guy. Look at how much Jermichael Green is compensating here to put a body on Jokic because James Wiseman is not. He's kind of in no man's land here. And now you can see that Jokic has Jermichael Green completely pinned to his back and in position to catch a pass. He's five feet from the rim and James Wiseman again is in no man's land. So Bones Highland sees how open Jokic is, delivers the pass, and Jokic is basically wide open for the little floater, which he easily converts. This is a fundamental failure on many fronts. Like this is just low defensive IQ and not understanding the personnel of your team. All right, so the second chance opportunity that the Warriors allowed provides a bucket for the Nuggets. All right, some terrible transition defense here. The rookie makes a move on Steph Curry, freezes him, but fortunately misses the layup. However, Jokic is right there for the putback, but he misses it, is about to grab it again. But guess what? Steph Curry, who's about eight inches shorter than Jokic, is there to battle him, and ultimately, he's able to come away with the ball. This is the kind of intangibles that you expect from Steph Curry. This is a very impressive play. Now the Warriors are out in transition because Steph Curry was able to grab the rebound and they have a four on two opportunity. Steph Curry makes a beautiful pass to Jonathan Kuminga for the easy dunk. Okay, now there are two and a half minutes left. The Denver Nuggets... <coughs> <coughs> Now there's two and a half minutes left. The Warriors still have a one point lead. The Nuggets only scored two points in the span of one minute. Steph Curry is now out of the game. Dante DiVincenzo replaces him. Now this is fully the second unit. Let's see what happens. Jokic has also left the game. DeAndre Jordan has entered the equation and immediately sets a screen on Jordan Poole. Now the question here is, is James Wiseman properly communicating with Jordan Poole that there's a screen there? Because as we can see, Boom! Jordan Poole is completely and utterly erased by DeAndre Jordan. This is bad. Now DeAndre Jordan can roll and Wiseman is forced to guard two guys. I don't know whose fault this is. I think both of them may be screwed up. I think Wiseman probably did not properly communicate to Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole also needed to go under the screen because he's guarding a rookie. And, and if the rookie ends up getting open from the screen because Jordan Poole goes under the screen, well, he's gonna end up with a long two. And if a rookie wants to shoot a long two, let him have it. See what happens. It's okay. That's a lot better than the alternative trying to go over the screen, getting erased, and then forcing Wiseman to guard a two-on-one situation. <laughs> okay, so the rookie does one pump fake and Jordan Poole is just completely out of the play. This is a terrible defensive possession by Jordan Poole. Okay, he dumps the ball off to DeAndre Jordan, who is just muscling right through Wiseman and just puts him right through the rim. I mean, this is tough. Obviously, you can foul DeAndre Jordan, who's a terrible free throw shooter, but Wiseman elects to just put two hands up and get dunked on. What are you going to do? Okay, on this play, DeAndre Jordan is motioning to set a screen. And look at where James Wiseman is on the play. This is bad news for the Warriors because in a pick and roll situation, it looks to me like James Wiseman is a drop coverage player. And the Warriors are not a drop coverage defensive team. Not at all. So this is really bad news. And in terms of Wiseman being the backup big for the Warriors and playing drop coverage. This is not what the Warriors want. The Warriors want switchability and guys that can move their feet. If James Wiseman is playing drop coverage, that means he doesn't have the capability of, of playing perimeter defense. We're learning things here. So Bones Highland ultimately does not use the screen and, and kind of just blows by Dante here. That's just too easy. I thought Dante was a good defender. That is terrible defensive possession. All right, next possession. Once again, this is Bones Highland against Dante. Jeff Green pretends to set a screen, but he really doesn't. He just kind of slips away. But DeAndre Jordan, once again, is coming over to set the screen. 
Is Wiseman properly calling out the screen? I don't know because it looks like Dante had no idea there was a screen there. He gets completely erased. Bones Highland is wide open in the mid range. James Wiseman is playing drop coverage and Highland gets a wide open jumper splash. What in the... Okay, so we'll see what happened here. Highland has a one-on-one -on -one opportunity against DiVincenzo and I guess Jermichael Green got tired of it because he sags all the way down to the baseline to discourage the drive but Highland goes anyway and then Green is kind of in no man's land here he kind of deters Dante's space and Dante kind of lets Highland blow by him because he thinks Green is there but Green is actually not there and Highland ends up getting a wide open layup this is certified disaster right now. The Warriors have completely broken down defensively. Nobody has no idea what to do. Nobody has any accountability and nobody can stay in front of their man. The help defense is a disaster from top to bottom. And now Highland is looking like a damn star. He's getting buckets. He's making plays for everybody. Like this is a mess for the Warriors right now. Okay, next possession. Once again, James Wiseman is playing drop coverage. DeAndre Jordan is there to set a screen for Highland. See what happens. Now Dante is doing everything he can to limit Highland because as you can see, Highland is going off and Dante has had a big hand in allowing that to happen. So Highland is using DeAndre Jordan's screens really well. James Wiseman is nowhere to be found. Dante goes over the screen. Jamichael once again is completely over helping one pass away. His man Highland sees a wide open Jeff Green from the three and Jeff Green cans it. This is just, uh, you gotta understand something. I'm a Warriors guy. This kind of defense is completely and utterly unacceptable. I don't watch this kind of. Right, final possession, once again, Highland against DiVincenzo. Now, I don't know if there was some kind of defensive scheme that was changed here for the final possession. I really don't understand because Jonathan Kuminga is guarding DeAndre Jordan. I don't know if they're trying to make it a switchable situation because you know that DeAndre Jordan is trying to set the screen. Meanwhile, Wiseman is now out in the perimeter against the guard. This doesn't make any sense. See, Jonathan Kuminga is just way too small for DeAndre Jordan. He gets pinned. Bones Highland once again just blows right by Dante. Jermichael Green sees it, has no choice but to completely leave his man to help on Highland, who once again sees a wide open Jeff Green who cans another three. The Warriors just gave up 14 points in the span of two and a half minutes. As soon as Steph Curry left the game, it became a disaster. Now looking at this overall three and a half minutes of play, who is the biggest problem defensively here? I would argue James Wiseman playing drop coverage is a huge problem because it's giving up wide open, easy mid-range looks against the opposition. It also seems like he's not calling out the screens in a timely manner. This is also a giant problem. He is the anchor of that defense. He is responsible for how the defense goes. He's supposed to call things out. He's supposed to be super active. He's supposed to be able to guard one-on-one. -on -one. He's supposed to be able to help. He's supposed to be able to play pick and roll defense. There's a lot of responsibilities as the anchor of a defense. And, and he seems like a very one-dimensional defender at this point. So if the Warriors are going to rely on him to anchor the defense, well then they better not have a ton of other holes at other positions. Dante DiVincenzo, this is super disappointing. Remember, he is effectively replacing Gary Payton. And I promise you, Bones Highland would not be doing this to Gary Payton. And combining this situation with Jonathan Kuminga, who is not doing fundamentally sound things, I think the coaching staff has to use different rotations. I don't think you can put two completely inexperienced defenders at critical defensive positions and expect to have any kind of success long term. We are two games in, James Wiseman and Kuminga have been utterly unreliable from a defensive standpoint. They are utter net negatives and the footage here shows why, in my opinion, Steve Kerr and the coaching staff have to make quick adjustments and stop rolling out these lineups that are completely and utterly failing from a fundamental standpoint on defense. Let me know what you think down in the comments below based on what you've seen of these combinations that Steve Kerr is trying out in terms of how the defense is going, how Dante looked, how Wiseman looked, how Kuminga looked, and to some extent how even Jermichael Green looked playing alongside all these guys. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's all I got for you. Until next time.